Well, the headline of this episode's probably got you hooked, and rightly so. We have some major developments you really need to know about. I'm Rob B, of course with Rob D, and you are listening to The Property Podcast. This is episode 193. All will be revealed very soon. Yes, welcome to The Property Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Rob, you've given it the build-up. Are you leaving it to me now to knock it down again? How can you knock this down? I'm excited about this episode. <laughs> okay, well, the major developments we're referring to could be construed as slightly misleading, but we're talking about big infrastructure developments. So whatever you were thinking it was, we're talking about big infrastructure projects, which you do need to know about because they have a major bearing on property investment, and there's lots of them. So we're going to run through a whole load of those in this episode. Before we get into that, though, it's come round again. It's meetup week again next week. I don't know what's happened to the second half of this year. It's absolutely flying. But the first Thursday is of the month is coming up next week. That means it, of course, is meetup week. It's going to be the last meetup of the year. And Rob, we've discovered how to get you to go to places because <laughs> you went to St. Albans last Christmas and they made sure you're coming back. Yeah, completely by chance. But the first time I return to St. Albans is Christmas again. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that mince pies were there last year. And Chris, the meetup leader, has promised mince pies again. So, Chris, if you're listening, you're probably going to get a few extra people now because everyone knows that if you go to the St. Albans meetup, there's going to be mince pies. So I'm really looking forward to it. Christmas meetup, going to be fun. I might have an extra sherry, an extra mince pie and enjoy myself. So... I really look forward to meeting everybody who gets along to that one. And Rob, we are going to get you pinned down and committed to a meetup for next week, aren't we? Yeah, I'm just waiting to see what what other leaders are going to be offering. Can, can I get can I get mince pies? Can I get something better? I'm I'm going to play them off against each other. Um, but yeah, do make it along if you haven't been to one yet this year. It's your last chance. Make it happen. They're always really good fun. All you need to do is go to thepropertyhub.net slash meetups. You'll see a big list. You can pick up the one nearest you. It's completely free. Just book your place so we know you're coming along, and we'll love to see you there. Now you may have been thinking. Well, the headline of this episode is surely because the autumn statement was yesterday. This goes out the day after the autumn statement. Unfortunately, we're recording this before the autumn statement. So if you're looking for commentary on that, if there's anything big, we will talk about it next week. I'm sure we'll cover it in some sort of level of detail next week, along with the other things we have planned. More on that later. So our new story this week, as we record it, is the announcement of the HS2 line Route 2. So The Route 1 to Birmingham has been announced, confirmed on which way it's going to go, what stations are going to be on that route. But now the second phase, which goes to Leeds, Manchester and other places, has been announced also. There's some winners and there's some losers. So Rob, obviously you've you've been paying full attention to this um, transport announcement. What's your views? (laughs) Um, I am frantically scanning the page to see if I can read quick enough to sound like I know what I'm talking about. But no, it's not something I know a lot about. And seeing as we were meant to be having a meeting about the magazine yesterday and you derailed it uh, by going on about transport for about 10 minutes, maybe I can tell you you want to talk about it. So I'll let you have the glory. Thank you. Although I am a tad disappointed because I know you've just come back from York and been to the railway museum on my recommendation. Um, So I I thought I'd finally cracked you. But anyway, (laughs) um, so the winners and losers of this, it is important, you know, we joke, it's not just for train geeks like myself. there's, There's massive, massive repercussions good and bad for for many of these towns and cities some of the unexpected um, winners are, are Wigan for example the HS2 line will go directly through to Wigan and that's because Wigan then goes up um, to Glasgow on the west coast line there so it's strategically placed but Wigan has unexpectedly done very very well from this and has a direct HS2 link so well done Wigan a potential loser is Sheffield now Sheffield they're talking about putting in a line into the city centre now. It was going out just outside the city centre near a shopping centre, which not that many people were happy about. I've got a hunch that they might not get the full service there. We'll see. It might just be like what other cities have, where it's HS2 so far, and HS2 service could go out to Sheffield, but actually it's the old line from there. Crew, an obvious winner, I talked about this before, but crew, an incredible amount of money going in there. 
um, being a major hub. And obviously Manchester Piccadilly, but more on that soon. So loads and loads of excitement on this one, not just from me and not just from Train Geeks. There's going to be major impacts, but we are going to cover this in more detail shortly. Yeah, and you know what? It's actually really interesting. If you go and look at the piece, and all the links are going to be in the show notes this week at thepropertyhub.net slash major projects. There's a graph on there showing what journey times from various places are now and what they will be when it's complete. It's going to bring places as far afield as crew into very easy commuting distance of London, which is just nuts, really. It, it really does make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, crew, for those who are now pondering, oh, I wonder what it is. 55 minutes. 55 minutes to London. It's just incredible. Under an hour. That's absolutely brilliant. So and that's kind of bringing it in rank with places like Northampton now, which have been a bit of a property hotspot. So definitely one to watch. Okay, Main topic of the week, we're going to expand on this now. It's not going to be all Northern Powerhouse. We've done that in some detail before. We will touch on some of the major projects there, but we're actually going countrywide. Yes, we are. So let's talk about some major developments. And first, why should you care about these things if you are not a big train or construction geek? Well, these projects can have a huge impact on property investment and capital values. So if you're in the southeast, you'll probably be familiar with Crossrail. So the Crossrail effect is like the most recent example that a lot of people will know about, about when one of these big projects and the difference it can make. And we're talking about big projects here. So we're talking in the high hundreds of millions and the billions. There are lots of smaller projects, which yes, do have a small local positive effect. But when you get up into the big projects like things like Crossrail and like HS2, they can have a massive, massive regeneration effect on on big areas. And this effect, Rob, you tend to get in a couple of stages. So this is something you talk about, but I noticed this when Crossrail came in in London. It It was announced and you got a big boost. And you'd think that once it had been announced, that was it. Um, much like with stocks, when something's announced or even before it's announced, it's all priced in straight away and you get the jump in value straight away. But that tends not to be the case because these projects are operating over such huge timescales. You'll get a bump when they're first announced, then things will go quiet for a bit. And when they're nearing completion, then it really kicks on again and you see even more growth. Yeah, absolutely. Stratford's a prime example of this. So when the Olympics was announced, the property market in that local area was bouncing. It really was. It, they shot up in prices, all the properties around that area. Then property prices actually fell because there was a long time between the actual announcement and the Olympics and the major regen projects. It wasn't just the Olympics. It was the train station, everything else being complete. But once it was complete, that lull, that drop was more than made up for by prices going upwards. And they've now been sustained because all those projects are there. So the people who want to live there because everything's in place are now moving in and prices are moving north again in that area. And that's what happens with most major projects. You have that initial bump, goes quiet, maybe sometimes even drops because it went too far in the first place. But then actually the real growth happens when it comes in. Now that doesn't mean you should wait for when it first comes in because if you're patient, you know that will eventually happen. But maybe it's don't panic when it's first announced. That's a possible lesson there. So we've got plenty of projects here. And it, I don't know if it's just me, Rob, but it seems like there's been a lot announced this year. I don't know if I've got bias to the presence of where we are right now, but it just seems that a really high number of projects are being announced, which I, I think is fantastic. Yeah, the, I think there have been loads. It, just running through the list, I was surprised. And some of them I'd forgotten about, some of them I hadn't even heard about. There does seem to be a lot going on. And the one that probably everyone is aware of is hs2 and hs3 and rightly so the hs2 project is a 55 billion pound project you know all the projects like the title says are major we're not going to talk about any five million pound you know brush up scheme here it's all big money stuff and this is the biggest one we've got here is the hs2 project it will although it's controversial i have no doubt it will have a major positive impact on a lot of towns and cities in the Midlands and the North. And that's fantastic. It's going to take a while to do, but there are lots of spin-offs from this, lots of jobs going to be created. But once it's all in place, as Rob mentioned, it's really going to be interesting, the dynamics of some of these places, like Crew, like Wigan. Yeah, okay, Manchester, it's obvious it's going to do well. But some of these places that aren't as well known, not necessarily bad places, but just aren't as well known, what will happen? Because suddenly these places are being put on the map, literally, you know, by these train stations and these train lines. 
So really interesting to see. And in the follow on from that, and it hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's very much in the pipeline, is HS3. So that's connecting from west to east or east to west, depending on your bias. I'm from Liverpool, so it's west to east. And looking at the train lines between Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, Hull, and all that, those areas, and putting the same super fast trains going across. So that's definitely one to watch as well. Talking about things not being announced yet, that's one of them. But HS2, been announced, lots of news on that in the last couple of weeks, but definitely dig into it because there's a lot of property areas that are going to do very well from it. But you'll be very pleased to know that it's not just going to be about the North today. We've got plenty going on outside of the North and starting off, Rob, with our capital city. Yeah, so another project that's been in the news a lot recently, you've probably seen, is the expansion of Heathrow. So there was this debate that went on for years and years and years and years about which airport was going to be expanded, whether it's going to be Heathrow or Gatwick, whether it was going to be a new airport. Boris Island was being talked about at at one point. Um, But finally, it's been decided that Heathrow is being expanded. And people have different opinions about this. I don't really have an opinion about it. I don't know enough to know whether Heathrow being expanded is the right choice. But I do know that when it happens, it is going to make a huge difference. So the estimate from the Airports Commission is that the expansion is going to create up to 179,800 jobs, very precise, and create over 200 billion in economic benefits across the UK. And this is by 2050. So again, we're talking over long periods of time here. But the thing to note is that these gains aren't all going to be in the immediate vicinity of the airport. So there's been a report done that says that of these 180,000 jobs that are going to be created, only 70,000 of them are actually in London and the South East. The rest of them are going to be distributed across the UK uh, because of things like um, research and development, which is strong in other areas, um, sort of freight and various other things mean that these gains are going to be distributed across pretty much the whole country. So even though it's a project in London and it's a big one and it is going to make a huge difference in the immediate area, that is going to have knock on effects elsewhere. So even if you think, oh, you know, London's getting too much spending and too much focus, any kind of project this size, and it is a huge one, is going to be felt pretty much everywhere. Staying in the capital, Crossrail 2. So you've probably heard of Crossrail, and and it's got lots of headlines, and quite rightly, very exciting. But Crossrail 2 has been talked about and proposed, and it looks like it's got some legs or some wheels, but we'll see. It looks like it's going to happen. The amount of money that's been put into it just to propose it is huge. So we'll see if it gets off the ground. But if this comes about, you need to be aware of it. A bit of depressing uh, fact now for those who ever use the tube. Overcrowding on the tube is forecast to double by 2041. That is quite disturbing for anyone who's been on the tube in rush hour. And the National Rail Services going into London, and I experience that daily, are going to face similar challenges. So Crossrail 2 is going to help alleviate that problem. It mainly helps the southeast. Most of the lines are there, but it does go into to North London as well. Crossrail 2 would increase central London's rail capacity by more than 10%, which, you know, it's 10% of a big number, so that will make a difference. The way to look at it is this, though. If you get the train from Manchester in just over an hour on the HS2, and then it takes you an hour to get across London, what's the point? So the original Crossrail going across the capital, that's great. But if you're going north to south or south to north, it's actually really, really difficult. So there's definitely an argument for Crossrail too. Again, most major projects are controversial, but I think the benefits of it, once it's completed, will be there to see. Makes it interesting though, a side point to this is the trains going to Euston from HS2 and Euston's becoming more and more well connected with King's Cross. So they're both next to each other for those who don't know London that well. It'll be interesting to see a trend of more head offices moving into the King's Cross and Euston area because they are so well connected now. A case point being this week, again, Google have announced they're expanding their head office in King's Cross. They've only just opened one, literally in the last few months, but they're going to expand again with thousands more jobs there. I don't think they'll be the last. I mean, we've got a small RMP office there and we've seen the trend. And obviously, Rob, you bought in King's Cross, so you saw the trend as well. So we're we're, uh, clearly ahead of the game on this one, or just very lucky. 
I'll let people decide. <laughs> well, I'd like to go on record saying I didn't see the trend. I was just very lucky. Uh, but it has enormously changed over the last five years or so. And Houston is still a little bit patchy in places, I would say. But there's going to be big improvements there as well, I'm sure. So yeah, this project is very much needed. Because as you quite rightly say, Rob, getting from London to Manchester is going to be a doddle. But on a on a bad day, getting from one bit of, from, of London to another is just ridiculous. Like if you've got, if you live in North London, and you've got a friend who moves to South London, you're basically never going to see them again. So this is definitely very much needed. <laughs> I had a friend who did that. And I said, you may as well have moved to Paris and <laughs> yeah. got there just as quick. King's Cross to Paris is pretty reasonable, St. Pancras. So yeah, I agree. Okay, so we're not done with the rail improvements quite yet. Also announced is a billion pound project to electrify railways in the northwest, which is going to increase capacity and really reduce journey time. So this is not the same as HS3, which is also operating in that kind of region. So this is a combination of new lines and station upgrades. It's going to increase the number of passenger train services in the region by 40%. And it's going to cut journey times between Manchester, Liverpool and Leeds. And this is something that I think we've moaned about on the podcast before. We've certainly moaned about it off air. It's like the, the difficulty of getting from Liverpool to Manchester or Manchester to Leeds, considering how geographically close they are and what big economic centres they are. If they didn't do this project, by the time you've got HS2, it's almost going to be quicker to go via London. And I don't know if it's going to be directly affected by this project, but a couple of weeks back, I was going by a train from Chester to Manchester, which is really not far at all. And it took for blooming ever. And it was like stepping back on back in time onto some ancient train from the 1950s or something. So clearly, investment in that area is needed. Not not just the big kind of glamorous stuff if connecting far-flung areas of the UK, but making these capacity changes and these tweaks that are going to bring down journey times between areas that should have been better connected anyway. So that's not one of the more glamorous ones, but that's going to make a real difference to some of these areas where we're seeing lots of investment going in anyway. Now, there's a trend with these investments. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a real bias between two cities. It's London and and Manchester. And now I'm just going to rattle off several billion pound, multi-billion pound in some cases, projects in Manchester. So the first one, slightly train related, don't worry, it's the only one that's train related. The Piccadilly Station hub, the HS2 hub, they're going to have to redesign the city. They're connecting up the, the train links between Piccadilly and Victoria. That's all very exciting. But basically, they're going to absolutely regenerate that immediate area of over a billion pounds worth of investment. It's going to make a huge difference. Like Rob said at the very beginning of this podcast, want to check the show notes this one because we put all the links in there for you so you can read more about it. But take a look at that one. Manchester Airport, it's not just Heathrow. Uh, Manchester Airport, again, the airport itself, over a billion pounds going in. It's said to be the single biggest construction project ever to take place in Greater Manchester. We'll see. There's quite a few trying to claim that crown. The 10-year scheme will more than double the size of Terminal 2, link and improve the connections to Terminal 3. The ageing Terminal 1 will be demolished. And the bosses aim to slash off-peak security queues down to five minutes. We'll see. It claims to double the airport jobs to 40,000 within 30 years, adding 10 million annual passengers in just a decade. I'm not surprised by that one, the way things are going. The move bolsters Manchester's battle for the government to recognise the true worth of regional airports and underlines Manchester Airport's place at the heart of the Northern Powerhouse. That's directly from the website. So a massive, massive project. There's also, not made it into the, the notes this week, a billion pound project next door to it just outside Manchester Airport so one to look at there but Rob I've done quite well there but you've got a bigger project yeah there's the small matter of a three billion pound scheme Manchester Place where 10,000 new homes are being built over 150 acres so that's three multi-billion pound projects that you just rattled off in a couple of minutes cumulatively it's going to make an enormous difference so we're fans of Manchester Anyway, it's already a great place. It's changed immeasurably over the last decade, but so much more to come. Now, there's one city that's been forgotten slightly among all this. Oh, I do feel a bit sorry for them. Yeah, let's spare a thought for a moment for Birmingham. Birmingham is supposed to be the UK's second city, but where's the investment? Everyone seems to be talking about Manchester. Well, it's okay. 
there is something going on in Birmingham as well. There's HS2, which will benefit from, of course, there are banks relocating there. But there's another big project as well. I mean, it can't quite compete with the three billion one that I just mentioned in Manchester. But there is the Paradise Project, which is where 500 million it is going to be spent on shops, offices and improving the layout of the city centre. So it feels like a come down now, only 500 million, but it is a big one. And I know we've had a few investors come on summits who have bought in Birmingham city centre and, and really like it. It's not an area that we know as much about, but there's clearly a lot going on there. A lot of companies are relocating there. And that project, while it seems small compared to the scale of what we were just talking about, it is still a really big one. And so that's going to make a big difference, I'm sure. And the link to that, as well as all of the others, will, of course, be in the show notes. And finally, the next project, anything can announce in the autumn statement. I'd be surprised if something wasn't announced. They've dropped lots of hints about infrastructure projects. Maybe they just talk about what's already been announced and how great they are. But I wouldn't be surprised if something else is mentioned. And if it's noteworthy, we'll talk about it next week. But as we're recording this before the autumn statement, we'll see and comment then. But what we won't delay on, Rob, is yes, we've got the resource of the week coming. And yes, we'll tell you what's coming up next week. But we simply cannot put off the review. Of course not. Who have we got this week? Well, a cracking review from Charles. Thank you, Charles. Charles says, The Property Podcast is amazing. As an accidental landlord and a newbie investor, this has got to be one of the best resources I've found. Rob and Rob are very personable and fluid in their approach. A wealth of advice without any sales agenda. And of course, their resources are excellent. I listen to this every day on the way to work and learn something new. Definitely my top resource of the year. I wish them all the best and hope to see them at the Property Investor Show if you don't believe me, have a listen to the show and see for yourself, Charles. Thank you, Charles. And because this was left back in April, yes, we are very grateful. We have a lot of reviews to get through. We hopefully got to meet you at that show, but hopefully we can meet you at one of the meetups as well. So thank you, Charles. And thank you to everybody who gives the podcast some love because it keeps us going. 190 odd now, powering on to 200 and beyond. And I don't, I don't want to give too much away, but we've got exciting plans for the podcast next year. Yeah, massively. And to make sure that you don't miss on, out on any of that, do subscribe if you haven't already. If you go to thepropertyhub.net slash podcast, you'll find a big subscribe button that will walk you through exactly how to get every episode downloaded to your phone, whichever device you're using. And it's the easiest way to make sure that you get the podcast every week. And along with every podcast every week, we've always got a resource of the week. And more often than not, it's an interactive map. <laughs> And and to be consistent, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, you can be competitive. I like this. Thank you to Damien who sent this to me via Twitter. It's a map where you can put in your postcode, see what your credit score is of your area, which, you know, there's some apps that do that. But more importantly, compete with your neighbours and see, see how their area stands up. So... There's a table, Rob. Um, I haven't put my own postcode in yet. I'll do that in a minute. I'm not in the top 10, unfortunately. Um, so I'm probably bringing the the average down. But top 10, number one, Kings of the Pond Thames. Okay, I can see that. Number two, Shetland Islands. Any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, my only thought with this is, like, well, of course, they've got good credit because there's nothing to spend money on. Sorry if we've got any less listeners from the Shetland Islands. Uh, but, uh, oh, we've lost our two <laughs> listeners from the Shetland Islands now. <laughs> but yeah, um, what are you going to go into debt for? Um, but yeah, um, no big surprise that there's, uh, it's dominated by the Southeast, although we've got Harrogate um, sneaking in there. But it is interesting it's worth going and taking a look at and this is put together by clear score which is a previous resource of the week i think um is one of these places as a couple where you can go and get your credit report for free without having to do any of these nonsense subscriptions with experian or something like that uh, really really worth doing that Firstly, so you can make sure there are no applications you don't recognize and there's nothing that's jeopardizing your mortgage ability. But secondly, so you can find out your score, plug it into this map and compete with your neighbors. Which is the most important point, of course. So that's our resource. Thank you very much, Damien. And if you spot anything, feel free to send it in via email or just tweet it across like Damien did. And um, if it's any good, which most of the time they are, we'll feature it on the show. So thank you. We've done a hundred and odd of our own. So any help now and again for a resource of the week is always appreciated. But 
While we may occasionally struggle for a resource of the week, we do not struggle for topics. There's so much to go through. And next week, we normally like talking about ourselves, Rob, but we're going to spin, spin the table and look at other people's deals. Yeah, after four years of podcasts, we're fine, we'll give someone else a week. Um, we're going to be talking about um, listener deals next week. So a couple of weeks back, we talked about what we've been working on recently. And we said that we'd like to know what you're working on. So what we're going to do, basically, is go on to Right Move Live and have a look at different projects that listeners are talking about. So it might be something that they've bought or are thinking about buying. Um, we're going to go and look at those, give our opinions, see what the angle is. I think it's going to be one of the most fun episodes we've done. We're certainly going to have a good time. Our editor might not have a good time, but by the time the episode is ready, I think it's going to be really enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, Chris, in advance for that one. But we're really going to enjoy that because we're not going to prep. We're not going to spend hours before. We pride ourselves on getting a good feel for a deal in, in a very short amount of time. So we're going to do it live next week, your deals. We gave you the opportunity to send them in a week or two back, as Rob said. Go and look at the show notes for that one. You, you might be just in time if you listen to this on the day it comes out. But give it a go if you haven't. If you miss out, don't worry. We might, If it's popular, we'll do it again. But we are looking forward to it. So make sure you join us for that next week. And make sure you get onto the Property Hub with all the free courses, the recent upgrade. It's all free. Massive community there of over 12,000 wonderful hubbers who are all sharing their knowledge. We built this for you. It's been super popular. Take advantage of it. As we say, pretty much everything, if not everything, on there is free. So enjoy. Get yourself over there. We love reading about what you're up to. We certainly do. So loads and loads of links this week. Get over to thepropertyhub.net slash major projects. While you're there, book on for a meetup. They are next week, thepropertyhub.net slash meetups. But until we see you again next week, have a fantastic time. Have fun. We'll see you in a bit. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Property Podcast. For show notes, all our past episodes, and to leave a review, go to thepropertyhub.net slash podcast. 